G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. Another great day ahead of us because I'm going to be launching that rocket out there yet again. I've already attached the boosters and that means I just need to run through my checklist and prep a couple of extra bits and pieces to bring up with me. Now, last time I managed to put together enough grids for a large refinery and a proper assembler up there so that I can build the basic ones, use them to make the components for the advanced ones, and then build the advanced ones up there with resources on the asteroid itself, rather than having to ship all of those resources up there. Obviously I can't use survival kits because I don't have any silver to build the medical components for them, which is kind of the big reason I went to space to get silver in the first place, but that kind of didn't work out. I have been told by many people, so I'm going to believe them all, that in this scenario I will be able to find silver in the asteroids if I am lucky, so there might be many missions <laughs> hunting down silver in space, which could get exciting. But onto the mission at hand, which is bringing enough stuff with me to build a proper base. While I did put enough grids in for a few things, I didn't think about cargo storage on the base. If we look at the production window and get rid of the stuff that I had there, go to large grid cargo. Many of you would be aware that large grid cargo containers, both large and small, require some cobalt because they require a few metal grids. So instead of bringing the metal grids, what I'm going to do is bring a bunch of cobalt with me. And then similarly to that, for batteries, uh, if we go to do that, our power cells, these require some silicon and some nickel. So I'm going to bring some of them too. And I might even bring a little bit of iron up to the asteroid with me. The idea being that this way I won't have to refine stuff to immediately start building a few things up there. And I think per unit volume, this isn't a more efficient way of bringing stuff or I could just bring these and rely on the fact that I'm going to settle on an asteroid with iron and just refine iron first and save having to refine any stone until later. In fact, that might be a better way to go and not bring any iron, just bring the other materials. So in my personal inventory now, I have enough silicon and enough nickel for two large grid batteries and enough cobalt for 200 metal grids. That should be more than enough. So let's go out to the ship and start running through the checklist because I need to make sure that everything is good to go for launch. One of the things I know about these asteroids, which is going to be something to keep in mind, is that there is very little in the way of ice to be found up there. The chances of me finding ice are so incredibly small as to be something that I may as well not think about. I should be looking for ways to make oxygen while I'm up there. I cannot make fuel while I'm up there because I don't have ice and to bring excess fuel, I'm going to need a more fuel oriented rocket, something that doesn't have drills, something that doesn't have all this extra greebling, something that is designed around being as, well, dedicated to its task as possible. That appears to be all I can fit in the cockpit. In fact, might put two hydrogen bottles in there. Food and water in there. Let's check all of the various things. Battery is greater than 50%, so that's not too bad. Our tanks are all full. All, right, all parachutes are loaded. Let's go and collect as much water and food as I can get. One of the things with the daily needs mod that's kind of going to be fun for space is that I'm going to need to be mindful of how much water I bring with me. I can, from the rock, make the gravel and get all the other bits and pieces that I need, but I can't make new water if I don't find a source of ice up there. So all of my water will have to be recycled and there, I believe, are some losses in that system. So I will need to keep that in mind as I go forward. And that if I'm running low on water, I have to head home. I just don't have an option to hang around. I think to prevent myself having the issue of running out unexpectedly, I'm going to try not to carry all my water on me. Because if I carry it all on me, what will happen 
is I will end up forgetting about it until I start seeing the warnings and by then it'll be too late because I'll have to get all the way back down to the planet. Alright, our main stage is powered and fueled. The batteries are still over 50% which is as good as we're going to get. Now, I'm going to hop in and I'm going to set myself to the launch position. Which is slightly scary to do while I'm in it. Alright. see what happens. Now I'm a bit crooked but I don't think there's much else I can do. Crawler, launcher, piston. Launcher, piston. Reverse. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is scary being in it. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what on earth controls have I got on this hotbar? Right. Uh, I will need to fix those at some point because I don't know what's there. Uh, right. So, I need to parachute all of you. Auto deploy on. Toggle block off. Oh, hold up. Should I put more parachutes on here? Eh, I can do it up in space. I did make it down just fine without them last time, so I should be fine this time. Something I didn't do last time, which I'm going to do this time, is turn off all of my O2H2 generators on the Remora. Since I don't have any ice, they are just a cost of power. I think I'm ready to go. Three, two, one, go! Oh, That was close! I did not appreciate how close that was last time. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. That was something. At least with me in the pilot seat, I should be able to do something to try and make this a little bit more of a vertical ascent. Uh, perhaps. Oh, I forgot to put my overrides on my hotbar. Dang it. Okay, I think my... Yeah. Boosters are dead. Let's deploy. Four, five. Now, I need to keep an eye on where an asteroid might be. Heading pretty much for that grav asteroid marker. Hopefully I won't have to deviate too far. Hope Steve saw something interesting, because <laughs> I'm so distracted. Uh, I'm interested to find out if I manage to get an asteroid that's just inside the gravity well, whether my jetpack will be strong enough for it. One of the things that I kind of think could be exciting for this landing on an asteroid is I'm going to have to be very careful not to fall off. Because if I fall off, I have a long plummet during which I get to contemplate my demise. <laughs> which is not fun. At all. <laughs> but it, uh, oh, there we go. There's an asteroid. Let's head for that. That looks as good as any. My gravity 0.29. I hope it's a bit less on the asteroid, because that's going to make it. <gasps> I forgot something that a lot of people suggested I do. Oh no! I didn't put a landing gear on the remora. Oh dear. Well, that could make landing interesting. Yeah. Oop. Let's see. <laughs> uh kind of happy for this asteroid to be in moderate gravity because the higher the gravity it's in the less chance I have of Reavers being able to get me. Uh, so it'll be potentially more useful as a relay. Okay, here we go. Approaching. Let's turn on the braking thrust. Do I have enough horizontal thrust? Like enough of these little thrusters underneath to support my mass? I do! Yes! Perfect. I can do a gentle landing. The landing gear was not a complete disaster. Are you forgetting it? It wasn't ideal. <laughs> it's not a complete, a complete disaster. Okay, my ore detector is on. I don't see any iron deposits on this thing. I'm not sure how much I care about landing on something that doesn't have iron. Considering that is the main reason I'm coming here. Though I will 
investigate that uh, silvery colored deposit I saw on the lower part of this asteroid because if it's silver I'll grab some and then I'll look for another ingrav asteroid and see if it's got iron but I thought oh there we go it's got iron perfect we are gonna land here oh yeah <laughs> this is going to have a spectacular view this place uh, let's see got 63% fuel I've got quite a bit quite a bit of fuel I'm going to inspect see if there's kind of like an, a cave in this asteroid that I could go into and if there isn't I may drill myself one try and get myself a nice little horizontal landing spot to start building my base in and it's potassium oh I can't win on both counts but at least we got iron I love that the remora can actually fly normally here that worked out very nicely. Alright, here's a cabin. Let's turn my lights on. There's my exposed iron, that's what I want. I might just level myself off to gravity. 0.18. And then I'm going to create a nice flat platform in this natural cave. And I'll set down on it. And that'll give me somewhere relatively safe to walk around and start building the base. Oh, I'm so excited! This is amazing! <laughs> My first non-Omicronian base. Ooh. Okay. That goes out to nowhere. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. It's slightly scary. Ooh. Before I land, I might mine some of that iron so that I can just use it straight from the remora and pop it in a cargo container. I guess one of the first things I should do up here is aim for power and oxygen. So get the batteries in, get the basic refinery in, get the basic assembler in, then go for some solar panels and some oxygen farms. Ow! <laughs> it would appear that the remora with the command module is too tall for its own drills, even in right-click mode. Oh, let's just clear a bit of that out. Then I'm going to grab some iron. In fact, I might dig myself a bit of it trench that's potentially walkable up there. Most of the drilling on this is going to be done with base mounted drills. That's the plan anyway. So I'm going to have to build some quite significant scaffolding to set those things up properly. Down to 50% fuel. It's not too bad. Dampeners off. First test. Jetpack. <gasps> My jetpack works! Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, that makes it a little less scary, but my jetpack is going to use up fuel quite quickly, so I'm going to have to keep that in mind. But at least that uh, improves safety dramatically. So I'll pop my battery down in there, I'll pop a basic assembler... ...this way, I think. And I'll leave a gap for the basic refinery, just in case I want to move these later. It just makes it a bit easier to separate them apart. Basic refinery there. I needed to pop all those blocks down first because I only brought about an extra 20-ish steel plate. So if I started placing out the base too much, I would probably end up with... Uh, some slight challenges <laughs> trying to get things to fit. Since I'm planning on building a proper refinery and assembly assembler, I might... See if I can be stingy on how many plate I put into the basics. So I will almost certainly get rid of the basic assembler. Even though I probably will keep the basic refinery for refining the stone that's here so that I can get silicon and nickel up here. And also one of the first things I'm going to do here is build a light. <laughs> it's really dark. It's weird being able to use my jetpack. <laughs> and the jetpack has some interesting acceleration. Uh, it's... It's a little bit slow because it's so weak it's not gonna slow down very fast which means I'm gonna have to be very careful about how I use it huh I'm gonna check something something I was curious about and something which a few people did bring up in the comments last time which is up here is there any oxygen so right now if we have a look at my command module tank got 98.3 percent in it and it's going down fairly quickly <laughs> i'm gonna need a lot 
a lot. Oh man, I'm gonna need so many oxygen farms. <laughs> uh, so let's turn on the air vent with it on depressurize. Nothing. Alright, good. That is going to force me to use oxygen farms, which is what I wanted. I kind of dreamed of this mode being a sort of setup where I would need to use that sort of stuff. Part of my plan all along. How long is this battery going to last? Depleted in one hour. Right. Must get straight on and build some solar panels. I wonder which way the sun's going. I'm going to go down that way, alright. I'm going to have to build a fair way out. I think what I'll start with is a line of armor to go out far enough that the solar panel should be... should be exposed to the sun for as long of... as much of the day as possible. I'll build something to look like a... it's sort of supporting this as well. Since we are in gravity, it should need some visible supports. I kind of want to build most of this base out floating here because dang that view is an, it's an awesome view looking down to the uh looking down to omicron and looking out to the gas giant over there oh, i'll admit I'm very pleased that, the <laughs> that my thrusters work on my suit because can you imagine having to build this if i couldn't if they didn't oh that'd be horrendous i think the sun's gonna go down that way or at least kind of down that sort of way. Because if you look down, there's my base. There's the gas giant. And the gas giant is kind of west. So the sun is going to go down that way. Which means I may well be able to get away with a single axis rotor here. And get a fairly efficient solar panel setup. I'm <laughs> thinking back to previous times when I've run out of hydrogen. And just how bad <laughs> that would be right now. <laughs> Oh boy. Might try and get this rotor built and the solar panels. And then the next thing will be a programmable block so that I can set up Izzy's solar alignment script to run on it. Uh, for those of you wondering about me leaving the hydrogen thrusters on the Remora on. Way back when I tested this, the testing I did was wrong. These thrusters are not using up any fuel whatsoever. Have a look. Tanks not changing. Tanks not changing. Don't have to turn these off. <laughs> I got it wrong way back when I tested it. Can I not put bottles in my... Uh oh. No, that's bad. It looks like I might not be able to put oxygen bottles into my command module tank. I swear I could. Didn't I attach it straight onto... Oh, I didn't. <gasps> oh, and there's no large port. Right, that's bad. I have no means to get directly into this tank. So I can't refill my bottles right now. The bottles I've got are all I've got. That's going to make things interesting. Any more nickel and silicon. Slightly forgot to bring a drill with me, so let's just make one. Alright, this might be a flaw in my original plan to make all of the solar panels while I was up here. Perhaps I should have brought a little bit more silicon, or just brought some previously made cells. Um, a lot of people had suggested that, and I figured that I was just going to make them up here, so that's why I didn't bring them. But I kind of underestimated how much silicon was required and how little you get from stone. It's going to make the manufacture of these panels quite slow, I think. Although that's enough for one. That single panel is not going to be enough to power my refinery and assembler, but at least getting it built as early as possible maximizes my gains from it before it becomes nightfall. Because I am going to have some darkness on this asteroid, even if I stick an arm out a long way because of how close the planet is. I think it'll block the sun from the solar panels. I guess it might not. There's a chance of that. Bring this into alignment as much as possible. It's not perfect with a single rotor. I'm just kind of being cheap in my starting this build. I could set up a dual rotor system with uh, some sort of lifting vehicle to move map panels, but realistically I'm probably going to just be fine with what I've got. How much silicon do I need? 300. 
Oh, that's a lot. Better get all this drilling done while I still have oxygen bottles, because drilling without bottles is going to be a tedious process. Almost tedious enough that I would get rid of the command module's O2H2 generator temporarily. Grind it down so that I've got access to the tank. In fact, that may be exactly what I do. Let's see if I've got any full bottles left. I think I've still got three up here. And then I've got more in the... I've got more in the connector as well, don't I? One, two, three, four more in the connector. Okay. So I've still got a little bit of time. Still okay. It could turn out that I have to set up a bit of a base and then run home, but that's fine because we know how easy it is to get back up here. And now I know exactly where this is, I'll be able to launch straight to it. I was hoping to kind of set this up moderately well and then do some exploration for some silver after I'd set this up. But I guess that's possibly off the cards and instead I'll aim for getting this as operational as possible with the resources I brought. Let's have a look at how much battery power we've got. Uh, control panel battery depleted in one day while the refinery is running. That's not too bad. That means I may have a chance of running through the night. Well, my dreams of an independent asteroid station that didn't require resupply from the planet are probably a little grandiose just yet, but at least I can get something decent started up here before I have to head back down, and hopefully it'll mean that next trip up here I will maybe bring the right stuff that I need. I was never going to bring everything I needed, I was always going to mess that up somehow. Uh, I wasn't worried about that, I just wanted to hopefully bring enough that I could get by and thankfully I was smart enough to bring at least some silicon, nickel and cobalt. That meant that when I forgot the drill I was able to build that. <laughs> but yeah, did not bring enough silicon. Should have brought more. Oh, I built the solar panels all wrong, no. Uh, I just realised this silly mistake I made with the solar panels. Because I know I'm going to have to use oxygen farms. I should have planned around that and built it on an advanced rotor and built them on conveyor tubes so I could stick the solar farms on there. I mean the oxygen farms on there. I'll have to plan around having maybe a second oxygen farm set up for it. The nice thing about the oxygen farm is if I've got that set up before I leave, hopefully it'll continue to operate while I'm down on the planet. And then when I come up here, I'll be able to use up what stocks I've made up rather than uh, hoping to get up enough farms that I've got a supply that's adequate. Rather than hoping to get enough farms that I can constantly supply myself because I think that's a long way off. Here I was all that time ago thinking I was done with stone mining. All right, this will be the test. Soon we will have sunset up here. And I kind of hope that I don't get sun when it's dark up here. I'll feel like I'm cheating if I do, but there's not really much I'm going to be able to do about it. But I really do hope that when the sun dips down below Omicron, I will stop getting any sunlight. And that I'll have to deal with that. I'm not going to go to the extent of, like, ditching power somehow to counterbalance that effect. If I get light, I get light. But yeah, I hope I hope it doesn't happen. Energy low. All right, we're on to our last oxygen bottles. <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, given the number of things that I probably should have remembered to bring with me and prepare before I left. Geez, I'm lucky that I have that checklist to run through for my launch so I don't miss something truly mission critical. At least the safety checklist is there to make sure that I don't die. Because, wow, I definitely would have missed something if that wasn't there. Like, something as basic as a drill and a landing gear that I didn't put on. And so many people reminded me about the landing gear and I forgot. Ah, <sighs> safety checklist. I am very, very grateful for that thing. Ah, here it is. Magical sunlight! Aww. I was genuinely hoping that I wouldn't get that. Given that's the case, I'm probably best off building a, pro a programmable block now. Let's have a look at my battery. Recharged in three hours, yeah. 
I won't need that many solar panels, so that's good. In a way. Even though it's disappointing. In some ways, I guess, I might end up being grateful for that cheaty sunlight because the oxygen farms are going to be that much more effective and oxygen farms are pretty slow at the best of times. I'm still sad, though. Kind of annoying to get cheap power when you're playing survival. Impossible! <laughs> it's supposed to be difficult. Not cheaty. Alright, I'm now out of oxygen bottles, which means I have to do the whole fill up in the cockpit, come back out, do a little bit, fill back up in the cockpit, and be very, very careful about how long I stay out. So, I'm watching that top of my HUD like a hawk while I try and drill out this space that's going to be where I put some of these blocks down. Oh, and that's going to be the really scary thing, is going into control panels. I'm just going to have to grind away this thing. If I get rid of the O2H2 generator, I can actually get into the tank. Yeah, it's not that expensive. Especially now that I've got access... There we go. That's all I needed to grind out. Yeah, especially now that I've got access to iron, I don't really need to worry so much. So, control panel. Auto refill. Inventory. Pop the oxygen bottles in. And that was certainly a design oversight of using the this style of cockpit and not thinking about having some sort of access to this but oh well <laughs> at least I don't have to go back and forth thanks to grinding that out and pop the programmable block there for now I guess so if I have to move these things that's again finally not a huge deal because I've got so much iron up here and that's mainly what I waste Time to get the solar script running. Create a group. Solar rotors. Save. Programmer block. Edit. Browse. Wait for everything to load. Izzy's solar. Here we go. Okay. Should be controlling that rotor, I think. That should be increasing my power output. I don't remember doing that a lot, but... Solar panels four, rotors one, batteries one, connected grids one. Cool. Let's rename this to Asteroid Way Station. Now let's have a look at this asteroid and see where I should aim to try and get a decent amount of stone. Because it's quite hollow around here. So if I want to push through something, I'm probably going to need to come over to this side, past the remora, and push, I guess, around here. Probably shouldn't have dug out quite so much with the remora because I've just made it harder. Oh, actually, no. If I push in here, is that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll come around to here. I'll build a couple of conveyors and then I'll build and push in a, a piston mounted drill rig through the rock here. And that should collect me enough in a fairly short distance. I am thinking I'll use my usual trick of switching over to small grid drills to do the drilling. Uh, since small grid drills are so much cheaper to build. Alright, advanced rotor on there. Oh wait, do I want a rotor? No, I don't want a rotor. I just want a piston. I'm just going to do this simply. Oh no, I do need the advanced rotor, because I need to convert. But I want piston behind it. Uh, rats. Uh, that's not going to leave me enough room for anything. I was thinking about this sort of stuff and how you might go about making it so that it's expandable without having to destroy anything. I'm not that worried about that anymore. That was if I was going to have to build a stone mine down on the planet to try and get iron, but since I've got the iron up here, hopefully that won't be required. Conveyor junction, because every time I put a connector on there to try and do the conversion, it gets damaged. For a reason I still don't understand. Right, a little bit of extension out there, and then I just need to make enough space for the drill. I'll have room for three small grid drills in a row there. One, two... Oop. Oop. Watching my oxygen very carefully. And let's check how much oxygen is left in that tank. 96.6%. Alright. I'm using that up slow enough that I'm not too worried. Oxygen should not be my problem. Alright, just the conveyors left to be built, and then I have a drill rig. That is very basic, but should get me enough for a few more solar panels. I am going to need to next think about where I want to put some cargo on here. 
I've kind of closed off a lot of uh, potential expansion for my cargo with the way I've laid this out, actually. Um, perhaps I want to think about that before I get too much further ahead. Support that piston. I can then grind this out before I build it up anymore and put in a conveyor junction instead. Because then I can put a large cargo coming off at that height quite easily. I think I'd like to go large cargo first because Energy I'm going to low. be mining a lot up here. This is a mining station. Uh, so I should expect to need a lot of cargo space early. But I am trying to be efficient about how I do things here so that I've got stuff to make the cargo quickly first. <laughs> oh, this brings me back. All right. I have got some gravel on me that I do not want or need. Because I'm going to have heaps of it. And I seem to recall throwing this out down hills down on the planet. Oi. Move. There you go. See you, gravel! Energy critical. <laughs> Alright, I should recharge. <laughs> Before I get too distracted. Whoa! Okay. It's going to be annoying to empty it out, but I should probably try and empty the remora out. So thinking about things, I've got a couple of options for how I'm going to launch my iron back down to the planet. Because I'm going to be able to send refined ingots down. I've got enough stuff here that I should be able to do that to a decent extent. The option number one would be attach something to the remora and drop it part way down so that I don't have to land with it. Uh, the other option would be to launch something from here and just drop it with parachutes to go all the way down. The second one is actually the option I prefer because that's a option I can continue to take advantage of up here. And potentially, if I can get enough power production going here, I can stick an antenna on this place and it can act as a relay because I think my gravity will be enough here to keep it safe. I don't think the Reavers will spawn close enough to do any damage to this facility. So it's actually, apart from the lack of water, the safest place for me to be. Which is kind of cool. I've got my solar panels out here. Where could I put the oxygen farms if I don't want to replace that? I could just go with oxygen farms down a little bit lower. Because they're not going to spread out quite so far. Yeah. Kind of come off the back of this container or plan for a second container to go next to it and then come off the side of it down here pop it out so it's kind of sticking out at a different angle and then think about how I'm going to do some scaffolding to support this long arm although now that I know I get sun through the planet I might actually bring this arm in because it does look a little bit excessive for the size of the facility and yeah I'll lose a little bit of light from obstruction from the uh, asteroid itself but I think I might plan longer term to bring that back in. Oh, I just had a bad thought. I'll put my cargo on the most exposed spot on this base. So if I'm wrong and the Reavers can come here, or if I ever bring them here after spawning them in space, and they do damage, they're going to destroy my cargo first. It's not ideal. I think the chance is low enough though that don't really need to worry about it. No. I'm kind of thinking that where this drill's currently positioned will be roughly where I put a lot of the living quarters for the time being. Eventually if this place proves to be safe and somewhere that I want to hang out longer term I might put some living quarters with a view. Uh, but that's not my initial plan. I suppose I could build them over the top of these cargo containers actually. That'd be a pretty sweet view. Maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Production facilities on that floor. Living quarters above. There's my power reserves here. Ten hours. Okay, that's plenty. Plenty. Huh. My battery's up to 42%. Right. Uh. So at least for the moment, it would seem that that solar array is adequate for my needs. That's insanity. Did not expect it to be that good. I thought I was going to need at least 12. Like, that's refinery and assembler running and I'm recharging. 
Make sure I've got enough hydrogen to fly where I currently am. Then I'm going to start laying out my solar, my uh, oxygen farm. Done it this way with a conveyor junction here, so I've got an attachment point for other things at that stage. Then a few lines out, then another junction for more attachment points before I go to my advanced rotor. Now, I am getting enough from the solar panels, but they go out far enough that... Oh, I really don't want to come all the way out here. Hopefully that'll give me a long enough run with it. I just really don't want them both sticking out so ridiculously far. <laughs> Ugh. Alright, now it's junctions all the way. Which is not what you should normally do. Junctions all the way on something is kind of often a bad idea because of the performance hits that you take from lots and lots of junctions. But for the oxygen farms, I don't really have a choice because each of them needs to have a junction to attach to. Oh no! There's a little asteroid chunk floating there. We have to use the remora on the way out to get rid of that. Let's have a look out here. Am I going to get sun? Or have I totally stuffed this up? The sun's... Oh. I think I am going to have to stick this out all this way. <laughs> I also think I've managed to build on the dark side of the asteroid. Oh. Looking up there though, that's kind of cool. I can see the sun coming through there. And now that I'm up in space, I... I'm kind of thinking... Would it be nice to change up the skybox? To something perhaps a little bit darker? Oh, Hydrogen low. Hydrogen low. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gonna end badly, isn't it? Oh no, I'm out of nickel. No! Ah! Oh no! Ah, uh, that means I gotta play with my drill. Energy low. Expand it! Alright, I walk off. Off. Ah, uh, drat. I'm gonna have to do some hand mining again. Because I used my. used all of my nickel up. I don't have any. That I'm able to use for making the parts that I would need for a landing gear. Alrighty, let's grab... I think I might need a couple more of those. So the plan is something I've used before, which will be a landing gear attached to the drill head, and then that's going to lock it down to the surface. With it locked to the surface, I should then be able to detach the rotor part. With the rotor part detached, I'll then be able to grind it off, add a piston in there, and that didn't work. No! Alright, I'll try and do it this way. Let's look to a block. There we go, locked down. So with that locked down, let's detach. Uh, where is my detach? Detach. Withdraw the piston. Grind this off. Rebuild it. With another piston in there and then I get another 10 meters out of this. Assuming that's how many pistons I can fit in there. And it will get me a whole lot more stone this time around I think. Because I won't have an air gap on one side. How much nickel do I need? 33. Definitely didn't anticipate today being quite so much hand mining. Kind of forgot how much nickel you end up needing for all of the conveyor tubes and everything. I'm going to have to mine a lot of this asteroid stone in order to build all the stuff I want to build. That's okay, if I'm left with a husk at the end, that'll be kind of cool. I think it'd be kind of epic to have used up that much stone to produce a, an asteroid base. Let's hope that when I attach this, things don't explode. There we go. Attached. Grind you off. And we have a saved drill head. Uh, drill on. Drill on. Drill on. Rotor. On. 
Speed. Slow. Oh, uh, O2 and power. That looks scary. <laughs> Let's get at the cockpit. How's the tank looking? Oxygen tank, 93%. Still got heaps of oxygen. So I can stay up here for quite a bit longer. Just really, really need to get um, the uh, stone mine so that I can get all this nickel I needed for the oxygen farms. Because yes, that oxygen tank brings up a lot of oxygen and I can breathe on it for a long time, but it would be preferable to make oxygen here. I think I'm going to have to expand this out. I think I've I think I am going to have to have these come all the way out here. It looks like the oxygen farms will miss out on sunlight for most of the day if I leave them that in, that far in. That is sad. Oh. Uh, in that case, let's grind them off before I waste too much more. All I've wasted is a little bit of iron so far. So, production. I need a thousand silicon to build just two farms. And I currently have silicon 89, 644. Right. These farms are going to be time consuming to build, I think. It may be worthwhile shipping some silicon up here at some point. I'm kind of getting that impression. Especially if it turns out that I need, you know, 20 odd of these things. Because that's just two. I'm going to need a much larger drill. Uh, what do I want to do about oxygen storage, though? I kind of like the idea of the tanks being vertical. It's always a bit of a hassle to set up. Uh, what I might do... Actually, that'll work. Is I'll dig underneath this cargo container, and then I'll place them beside it. Uh, so I'll kind of conveyor it from underneath. Let's put a junction in here so that I can put multiple tanks down. And I can put oxygen tank right there. It looks like these pistons have gotten all of the stone they can. How much stone do I have left? 61,000. Yeah, that's kind of going okay. I'm going to need a l ah, I'm still going to need so much more. Do I pull this all the way back and make the drill head bigger and then push it all the way back in again? Might that be my next step? So that every further extension gets me a whole lot more stone. I think that might be the way to go. Bring it back to about here. And then I'll manually drill out to put down maybe two extra drills on each side. And have it spinning through that bigger core. And that'll be worth doing. Things I think about while I'm waiting for stuff to build. Alright, oxygen tank. Now I can build a couple of farms. Okay, we have a farm that has no sunlight whatsoever. My solar panels have none either. Oh, I think I know what I want to do with these. I'm just going to move the solar panels onto the farms. So I'll like stick panels on the outside of the farms and I'll remove this whole thing entirely. That's what I'm going to do. Haha. It's been bugging me <laughs> for the last hour of this recording. Thinking what I was going to do with all this and how I was going to make it look somewhat decent. There we go, two farms. Since my plan is now to keep just the other one, let's get rid of that. And lay out some safety railings. Oh! Hydrogen loop. Hydrogen loop. The irony of me falling to my doom while building what I am calling a safety railing is not lost on me. Just leave that open for now, but at least this gives me a walkway back up. From down on the oxygen farms. I would have to build it out so far to get the sun all day. All the way out here. I'm not even super happy with how far out they are now. Uh, so no, not doing that anytime soon. Increase this displacement as far as it goes. And we'll put more... Oh, actually, do I want to put catwalk on there, or will I leave that open? I might leave this bit open. Just have the catwalks on this part. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, no, I know what I'll do. I'll have open catwalks on here. Just to cover up the conveyor ports a little bit. So it looks a bit nicer. 
I am now waiting for the sun to come around to see how well those two oxygen farms do. I don't think they're going to do anywhere near enough for me to survive up here on just the oxygen farms. Based on how quickly I use up oxygen, I'm predicting needing something in the order of maybe... I don't know... 40? Probably more than that? Oxygen farms just to try and match how much I'm using up? But the idea would be, even if I only have 10 up here, the long stretches between my visits should allow me to accumulate a decent amount of oxygen so that when I come, I can stay for a long time before it runs out. And similarly with the solar panels, they don't need to be super efficient because I'm not going to be running the refineries 100% of the time, I'm just going to be building it sometimes. Next time, I think my plan will be expand this drill rig significantly. I I kind of had to limit how I made it initially, so it's really quite inefficient. And I need to come up with a better angle of attack against this asteroid so that I can get more stone more quickly. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Um... <laughs> Don't turn off your HUD for the outro without filling up your oxygen bottles first. Ah! I thought I learned that lesson. I've already made that mistake once. So as I was saying, need to make this thing more efficient so I can get a whole lot more stone a lot more quickly. Because I need so much nickel and silicon. And that's kind of the only way to get it. And I don't really want to have to fly down, load the remora up, come back up and do that too. So... Yeah, that's the plan. Improve the drill, hopefully start designing a little bit of the interior here and start thinking about where I'm going to do the drops from. Because looking down there, I don't think my positioning is quite right. But we'll do some test drops next time. So there's all that and plenty more to come from my asteroid home. I will see you then. <laughs>